Hello everybody. So today Solar Edge reported its Q2 earnings and um, feel just fine to me, but uh, of course they guided down uh, in Q3. They guided down because they uh, expect a weak US to continue. So it's the same story as Enphase. Uh, they, Enphase also guided down last week. Um, both of these stocks guided down because of the United States and the current interest rate environment, which is showing some sort of a slowdown in the residential installs of solar and thus the stock market is freaking out, selling these stocks, it's the end of the world, even though they both told us, whether it's Enphase and Solar Edge, which by the way are essentially a duopoly, they told us Europe is stronger than ever, doing, doing, doing better than ever. And actually, if you look at uh, both of these companies, well, over the past five years, and this is why it's always important to look back, uh, you can see that Solar Edge would have three x your money if you invest, invested exactly five years ago, um, and Enphase would have twenty five x or between twenty five and fifty x your money if you had invested uh, five years ago, knowing that Enphase was almost a three hundred dollar stock, uh, was it was a three hundred dollar stock actually uh, just nine months ago. Uh, so these stocks um, are really, really doing very well. That's the point that I'm trying to make in this video. Um, it's a duopoly, y'all. That's, that's how I'm writing this. It's a duopoly, okay? We're both doing very well. If you look at uh, over the past eight years, they've both... 12x, 12 times your money in eight years, both of them. And really the... The, the, the charts are a little, little un uncanny here. They, 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 look, they look pretty similar. Um, and phase has had a run a little later on than Solar Edge. Solar Edge uh, had a run a little earlier on, which, which makes sense because Solar Edge makes more legacy technologies, string inverters, and phase is still the main driving force be behind micro inverters, which are, which are this new technology, which is why I prefer end phase uh, over Solar Edge. But that's not, that's not the point. The point that I want to make here is that Solar is not a, a, a fad. It's not a trend. It's 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 not a not a not a pet rock. If you know, or or what is it? Uh, junko jeans in the nineties. That's not what solar is. Solar is not Pokemon Go. It's not fidget spinner. It's not the Wish app, which I guess now it's the Temu app. It's it's none of that. Solar is a step change in technology. You know, yes, I prefer Enphase a little better because I like the tech better because I think from a first principle thinking their tech is better. Uh, but this drop in Solar Edge is nonetheless ridiculous in my view because we need all the solar we can get. We need all of the solar we can get. And why is that, right? Why, why do we need so much solar? Because, and this is a slide for, from Solar Edge, you know, and, and very nice of them to put that. The electricity consumption, right? over the next 30 years is projected to well over double. And we also know one thing about projections is that they're always wrong to the downside. When I look at this prediction, right, that they're uh, re reusing, reusing here from a think tank, it looks like a pretty linear production. Right and uh, and and a linear, lin linear forecast we know don't work like that. It's probably not going to be linear. There's probably going to be some exponentiality. I doubt we're going to see the same linearity in electricity consumption. Right, 1.7 billion people uh, coming up new. Right, <laughs> new people that are going to need electricity. Urbanization increases electricity. Many many factors. But I want to. Also, spend our attention talking about AI, right? AI is also one of the big reasons why we're going to need so much more power. These computers are not cheap to run, and every single company is racing for an AI system, right? So, within the next five years, this is from Beth Kinding, popular Twitter account, within the next five years, power consumption is projected to increase by a st st staggering 212 times compared to two days level. That's five years, right? So big tech is going to want all of the electricity it can get, right? There's going to be a lot of competition for electricity. We need as much electricity as we can. Otherwise, we're going to be constrained, right? May I remind everyone that there's also the electric vehicles revolution that is demanding a lot of electricity. That's why Elon Musk made a call. We need to invest in electricity. And the only electricity that you can 
create so quickly, that you can install so quickly, is solar. Solar panels, they, they make solar panels as fast as they make flat screen TVs, right? The Chinese literally own the market and are flooding the market with solar panels. They are so cheap. I'm going to get back to, to it at the end of the video as to why they are so cheap. But just to give you an idea, this is often a fun fact that, I, that I've, I've always found, you know, pe people, people tend to forget that whenever we use, you know, any tool in our digital life, they use a lot of energy because whenever whenever you do anything on your phone, you connect to a server, there's a data center somewhere that's streaming something to you or that's like responding to one of your requests for you. And that uses a lot of energy. And in fact, if you listen to the very official numbers of, of the IEA, very long article here, you can read it and look at it. And I, I, I trust their, their assumptions on, on, on this one because so you, you, have, you have a lot of uh, uh, poorly written article that, that tell you, you know, silly numbers that are not realistic, but this one is more realistic. Uh, one streaming user of a 4K video, right, uses about 120 watts of data center power. So, so, so think about how many people in the West spend at least 1000 watts 1000 watts just just watching youtube or streaming stuff right and that's exponential all these things are growing exponential and we don't realize it and by the way resolutions for example on phones are increasing right now now many phones are 4k and it, our 4K today, you know, it will look like 400, 480p in 2008 seems today, if that makes any sense. So what I'm trying to say is that just taking the example of streaming, but streaming is just one example, right? The, 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 the AI, AI computation is, is just as relevant. And we can talk about everything we do online it uses so much power. You know, and, and a little question, like how do, how much power do you think this is going to cost, right? This is going to cost streaming giant screens in front of your eyes, watching TV as if you were in a theater, right? And you watch a, what you watch a, 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 a 20K film in a goggle. What do we think is going to our needs for energy are about to go exponential is the point I'm trying to make. They're about to go exponential. And in my view, the only way that we can meet our future electric demand is going to be solar. We don't have a choice. We don't have a choice because solar is so, so, so cheap. And we must, that's also my view, we must overfit solar. This is, this is Tony Siba who popularized this idea, right? Credit to him. But we must overfit solar. So that the rainiest days, the worst days, the worst weather in the worst spot creates enough electricity to match our needs. So the whole point is that we need to oversize our systems, right? And residential solar is the best way to do that because re residential solar, residential roofs have seven to nine times uh, enough space for you to power your own home. And by using residential solar, we may be freeing electricity for enterprises, right? Electric from the grid, we free it from enterprises, from say nuclear power plants and all of that stuff because there will be competition for electricity if this AI revolution continues. And if this AI revolution continues, you know, think about it. The AI revolution, do you think Microsoft or Google is going to hesitate to pay rates that are, say, a dollar or a kilowatt hour? I don't think they're going to hesitate, right? If they can turn electricity into profits, they're going to bid up that electricity much, much, much more than the regular household would bid, bid up electricity. Such that the, the cost for electricity right now may be heavily undervalued compared to the future value that electricity will have. Because all of these enterprises are going to use electricity to power AI, to power streaming, to power a digital con uh, revolution, to power their trucks. Right? And big tech will not hesitate bidding up the cost of electricity, which in my view makes all solar installations are going to make sense if you pay a dollar a kilowatt hour. And keep in mind, in some states, we're already, we're already past 30 cents a kilowatt hour. All solar installs make sense at a dollar a kilowatt hour. Right? All of them. And they will make even more sense. And I'm tired of showing these charts, but, uh, you know, repetition is, is the key to learning. So I'm showing them again. In my view, uh, uh, solar is the only way, right? And it's the only way, but it's also the only way because it gets cheaper and cheaper, better and cheaper every year. It's cheap to install. Look at the cost per watt. The cost per watt is, is, is declining. It's in free fall. The number of watts per module is increasing, right? And that looks like the beginning of some exponentiality, although there will be a limit to how 
how powerful uh, a module can be. But in the lab, in the lab, we're still getting efficiencies that are twice as high right now in the lab as we do in, in your standard residential solar panel. In a lab, we can do twice as high, right? Uh, what will labs be doing? 10 or 15 years from now, how much better are we going to get, right? You may have seen all the, the superconductor news, right? Something that is not supposed to happen is confirmed. We're making a lot of progress in technology. We're at 47% efficiency. Can we get to 60, 70% efficiency in the lab in 2030, which would give us 40% efficiency in the real world, right? And hope for another doubling yet again. Can we get to that? And yes, because the research on solar uh, is getting better and better. People are, people are using knowledge from the silicon industry, from the manufacturing industry to really improve how we make solar panels. And we're getting so, so, so good at making solar panel. And, you know, how, how cheap do you think solar panels are? Oh, well, how cheap, you ask? Well, this is from Tony Siba. I really highly recommend this, this video. Um, Tony Siba is showing us that, that solar can actually be cheaper than structural plywood. And, you know, try to think critically on, on this slide as to, as to um, his observation, is it, which, is, which is buy the house, get the free energy, or buy the energy, get the free house. Right? This is, this is a very, very deep thought because... And this is happening in Europe, by the way, uh, when we see all, all, all of these um, uh, pop-up solar installs, plug-and-play solar installs. We, we are not limited to solar on our roof. We can also put solar on our walls. That's, and, and it doesn't look that bad in a modern construction. We can entirely put solar on our walls and on our roof. And then how many more energy do you get per house? Do you, when you move from a 7 to 9x, right, to a 14 to 18x, your potential needs. And I just want to demonstrate this fact right here, cheaper than, cheaper than plywood. And, and this, is, this is, I think, the most Im impactful part of this video. So this is on Alibaba right now. I, I just took a random random solar panel. This is a fully black solar panel. It's very, very popular. A lot of people love black solar panels. They think they look good, um, at least better than, the, than the, the bluish solar panels as well. A lot of people say hey, it's a matter of taste. But anyways, so let's assume you're going to order solar panels from China. You buy 10, con 10, 10 containers, let's assume, right? Um, so you order, you order, you're ordering the cheapest panel, 410 watt per panel. You're ordering the max quantity. Your price per panel at 16 cents per watt, your price per panel is 16 $65. You're paying $65 for these giant panels. Keep in mind, they are about the size of plywood, comparable, right? And if you were to play the devil's advocate, you could take, uh, as an example, a, a panels that they almost don't make anymore. But, you know, these panels go five years back. They used to be 250 watts, right? So if you were to buy a, a five-year-old panel, and of course you were to pay this price per watt, you, you'd get even cheaper. You'd get even 40 bucks per panel, brand new. Um, it's dirt cheap. It's stunningly dirt cheap, and it's it's uh, it's uh, it's getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Um, now let's look at the price of structural plywood, right? This is this is from the Home Depot. I didn't I didn't go to Lowe's. I didn't cherry pick the more expensive hardware store. I went to the Home Depot, the cheapest hardware store. Look at the prices right now, right? So you can see the highest quality one is forty eight bucks, forty eight bucks to sixty five. We are not that far off from the price of structural plywood. And of course, uh, the example that Tony Siba took is in Australia. Uh, we know that the U.S. has very inexpensive wood, uh, which is the reason why it's so cheap. Uh, in most countries, you're going to have that, that, that relationship flipped where solar panels are cheaper. And one last thing I want to say is that, of course, these fluctuate tremendously. You may remember nine months ago, lumber used to cost a fortune nine months ago. So these prices were much higher on plywood nine months ago. And of course, these are just based on the market. This is a commodity. A commodity can go up in price as we have more monetary printing and we have to take down more forests. This is a technology. Technology reduce in price year after year. And who knows how cheap solar panels are going to get. You know, they will have a floor at some point, but we have not reached that floor, right? So this comparison is absolutely stunning to think. Solar panels are dirt cheap. 
Solar Agent and Phase both take care of the back end of these solar panels. They, they take this solar panel and they turn it into usable electricity for our homes, which therefore frees up electricity for all of the other needs of society. And this is very powerful stuff. I am very bullish on both companies. Um, I'm, I prefer Enphase, but I'm very bullish on, on both companies. Uh, to me, this is a this is a good man, good moment for me to add. I added some to Enphase uh, this morning, and um, you know I'm, I'm I'm happy about the cheap prices right now. The market is not looking in the long term enough. The market is just just so short term, in my view. Anyways, this was not investment advice. This is just entertainment. Appreciate your likes, appreciate your subscribes, have a wonderful day.